Welcome to Emotional Sobriety. I'm joined by you both on the show today because you adhere to a set of rules, certainly, and you've maintained a sense of discipline in your recoveries uh, over a considerable amount of time. And yet you have that flexibility. And, you know, we wouldn't all be sitting here and doing a podcast today if we weren't still trying to kind of like find new wrinkles to the question, I guess, of how do we well, it's, stay well and how do we stay connected? It's worth it's, it's worth noting that, that, that even after all these years, of, of being on the planet when you said when you included me in a, a it was just a group of two people said that adhere to certain rules i my immediate reflex was was was, was a fuck you it was like like you know <laughs> what <laughs> no i don't you know and then i go well, but you have said you have a policy you've called it a policy which uh, I, no, I like no I, i'm not saying you're not right i'm just saying you don't get rid of anything you know you, you add things you do not you nothing goes away and it is amazing once you mm-hmm. once you recognize that and you focus on that i had a mentor long before i ever did any of this work that used to say you cannot subtract so you must add the way alan says it is add more self yeah uh, I, i've heard it the other way that everything you have you already have it's just I- extracting the oh. uh, non-functional thoughts no. and the non-functional no, I, right. reactions and, and just take out, like at the core, yeah. it's all there, ready to go. You know, no, I and, no, I agree with that completely. Yeah, what, mm-hmm. what, what, I don't think people know they have it because I'll I'll say yeah. we like a lot of times I work with the the addiction voice and 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 then and then get hopefully fairly soon once they can uh, differentiate from their addiction voice. We talked yeah. about a recovery voice now, and we start that as if it's an external thing. But the recovery voice, I, you know, I later share with people, and and I and I think of it as it's an atrophied muscle. You know, it's it's in there, man. It's just right and on. and the other yeah. thing is, well the, the, you know, you know that thing that uh, I've sh- probably shared that with you, uh, uh, Patrick. That's called listening. It, it points out that that the saboteur voices are so much louder, and and they're so disrespectful that they are they they speak to you unsolicited all the time. And the wisdom voices inside of us, just like wise people on the outside of us, don't talk as loud. And they and they they will not speak to you unsolicited. You actually have to go look for them. You have to ask their opinion. You know, my wisdom voice probably looks a lot like Joe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I think I, th- I think that's the archetype there. I think it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, well hey, I, let me. I, I it, it isn't lost on me that I've been milking that look for a little while, right? <laughs> you know, hey, like, good fuck for you. dyeing the hair. I, I'm going with the. Uh, uh, what's what's the character? Uh, Gandalf. Gandalf. G- White. Gandalf. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, it, n- not sexy, but cool. Well, hey, you know, <laughs> you, it's, it's, a, uh, it's all relative, right? Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to set just uh, for the episode today, um, yes. our theme, we're going to be talking mm-hmm. about self-respect and emotional sobriety. And I just thought I'd ask around um, and see what your definitions of self-respect are and how um, maybe how that's changed over time. And uh, as you've got some physical sobriety, but now you're focusing more on the emotional sobriety part of our uh, recovery. And um, yeah, just what is, what does that principle mean to you? Well, sure. I, I, I think that is uh, great to explore and, and I've got nothing to tell you. I can just share with you the questions I have about it, like, like is self-respect an inal- should I treat it like an inalienable right that nobody can take away from me and I can't trade all- away? Or is it something that requires standards to be met for me to feel uh, self-respect? And if there are standards, whose values, mine or something from my programming and my conditioning and like, like, like if I feel I, what I'm doing is wrong, is it because it's not in line with my values or my values are fucked up? We can say the fucked up. Yeah. Okay. So you know. yes. <laughs> our values. Well, totally let's, 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 let's all say it. Fucked up. Okay. Yeah. Fucked up. Yeah. Testing, yeah. testing, fucked up. Yeah. Um, yeah. In, in fact, uh, I mentioned, I was, uh, on a workshop with uh, Maria Hornbacker and I'm uh, sporting uh, a little journal that uh, she gave me called feminist as fuck. (laughs) 
that's uh, I'm gonna gonna. We gonna should all aspire to be that, that spirit. Yes, exactly. We should we should all right. And um, so so this whole thing about self respect, right? Like this is not um, a test. It, it's it's empowerment. It's it's am I gonna you know be able to find my own agency to set my own path to paddle my own canoe to use uh, emotional sobriety language uh, and go in any direction I want and not go oh you're going in the wrong direction or well you can't go there right but you know like where am I going to go forget about should go want to go just you know like like i i'm looking forward to this conversation because i've got questions well over to, the over other to you tom uh, over we should start that way over uh um that makes me think of the movie airplane of course yeah exactly uh, over it, under. immediately roger but, uh, what <laughs> roger roger what <laughs> Yeah, get, we're giving it, we're giving Patrick plenty to, to edit out. That's fun. Yeah. Oh, Give no. me some work. It's well, just, you, well, you um, know, self self respect. Before you jump in, um, I think that uh, I can. I'm I'm a lot closer to the uh, the sea of time I spent like um, in active addiction than I am to this uh, these years of recovery that I've built. Um, so I can relate to the lack of re- of self respect I had. Um, and the kind of like lack of belief in myself to really accomplish anything so important that, it, that, I, that I wouldn't rather be just getting hammered, I guess, um, most of the day and night. And uh, I, I had no self-respect before, and I had, I had the inkling that I might be worth respecting or that in respecting myself, I could be of use to others, or at the very least, I could not, uh, I, I, I wouldn't be harming others if I um, wiled away my time with, with some worthier pursuit. So I guess like self-respect and, and what it, it's my sense of respect of myself has grown certainly in sobriety and, and in my connection to others. And just that inevitable filling of your time with things that are less just destructive and more constructive. And I think it's like, it's both been both inside out and outside in this like reconception of who I am and what I'm here for. And I think that, yeah, self-respect to me, what am I doing that's of worth uh, to somebody else besides me, I guess. One more thing I would sort of add to it is there is this tie between self-respect, I believe, and self-care in that what what's easier changing a core belief or changing a behavior i think it's easier to change a behavior and if i look after myself if i give myself you know joe time if i uh you know uh comfort myself when i need to when i get to work when i need to when i you know set boundaries and live by them that's self-care And that can't help but foster or grow that self-respect muscle uh, because, you know, I I think the behavior can inform the the committee of thoughts in my head. And something I heard, uh, one of the things I do is as a peer support worker in uh, aftercare at a treatment center, Uh, The counselor always says uh, every relapse starts with neglecting self-care. Now, whether that's true or not, that's pretty profound, right? Well, 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 uh, it certainly makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's not, it's not hard to follow. It's like, yeah. uh, I mean, to me, self, I mean, first of all, self care, like everything else, or like most self, uh, things else, it gets a, a little more complicated, I think, for, for a number of different people to talk about because it is subjective. You yes. know, because when, when you, when you said uh, uh, that, uh, Patrick, that you, that you didn't have self respect before, I thought, you know, because from where I'm sitting now, and I'm, I'm I'm always a big believer, and I think this is part of this is part of my self respect today is do not 
never, never judge an earlier version of myself by what I know and who I am today. And it's really hard to do that. It's hard not to wow. do that. It's like we do it all the time. It's like, but I'm sitting here, so I can't judge it that way. And what, what I was thinking is, you know, if I'm judging it from here, then the, the earlier version of myself, you know, not just in addiction, not just an active addiction, even after that, but, but especially active addiction, it's, it's like, oh my God, this, this, guy, this guy is, you know, is horrible. It's, you know, there's nothing going, but I, what I, what I thought, thought when you were saying that is no, what's happened over time, what's happened with me and my recovery is, is I've raised the bar because, because if it's, if self-respect is, is subjective, which I think it is. I wrote, I wrote this book. This, this it's called, I don't know if it's, it's kind of glares. It's earning your own respect. It's like, yeah, yeah I work nice. with, with, uh, with, uh, uh, I wrote a book called Self, the self forgiveness handbook with, 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 uh, Har uh, new Harbinger publications. And, and I loved working with those people, by the way, Just, if anybody's looking for publishers, if they're, they're wonderful. And even hmm. before they saw whether that book was going to sell, they, they came back to me uh, and that, you know, and they said, do you want to write another book? And, and which I, which I took a, as a compliment that they liked what I, how I wrote is, uh, and I, and I said, yeah, I know exactly what I want to write because the other side of the coin to self-forgiveness or self-compassion is self-respect. You know, it has, you know, one does not really exist w without the other. And, um, and I, I was looking, I just, I pulled this book off the shelf and I was going to, I was going to read you the little epithet, the little things I wrote in, are just quoted in the first of the book, just the, the ones from Victor Frankel and ones from Ralph Waldo Emerson. Uh, Frankel says, ultimately, man should not ask what the meaning of his life is, but rather he must recognize that it is he who is being asked. You know, that's, and that's so important, I think, because you, you use the word, talked about the word should a minute ago, Joe. And it's like, I, you know, it's like to the, it's, I, I, I try not to show the irritation a lot of times, but, but it's gotten to the place where, it, and that's not, that's probably something I need to work on. But when people go like, I, what, <laughs> what am I supposed to learn from this? What should I learn? You know, what, a, what, you know, and, and first of all, I go, I get, yeah, I go like, okay, well that you're, first of all, your language just says you're, there's only one thing you're supposed to learn from this, this difficult situation. Uh, and the other thing is it says something else determines what it is. You know, it's, it's like, we're, and so then we're just doing what I did throughout school, just trying to, to guess at the right answer you know, what's, I don't know what the answer in the back of the book is, but that's the one I'm trying to match. And so, you know, that's, and that's just, it's so judgmental of ourselves. So I love the idea taking from Frankel's stuff is it's, you know, that it's us who's being asked the question. So, so it, it is um, the question, the question instead of what, sh what am I supposed to learn is what all can I learn from mm -hmm. this circumstance? This is, mm -hmm. you know, this is where I, I, I started, I came up with the, with what I call the positive opportunism. It's like, how can I, how can I use this difficult situation to become a better person? You know, and that's raising the bar. And so the, the you know, and because to my def, if I was given the definition of self-respect, it is being very clear. And I think this is an ongoing process too, being very clear what your value system is. And I think of that as running right down the center of us. And each day living as congruently with that value system as, as you can. Now, you know, we're going to do that, you know, erratically and perfectly, but it's, it's like, you know, the, the three of us, as we sit here, we do that consciously every single day of our lives at this point. We, you know, and, and the truth is if we draw that line down the middle and say, how far off are we, we're, you know, all each each one of the three of us has lived, you know, out out of sight of that damn line, you know. But we have, but, but we don't get very far now, you know, because we yeah. have a because we have a and not just because we're so cool. It, probably that has something to do with it, though, that we're so cool. But but uh, but it also has to do with we we live in a, in a system that includes uh, accountability and support. So the yeah. idea is, is, is I'm not likely to get too far off because, because, and, and may, maybe you're, it's not even to the place where you want to view is going to intervene, but I'm sitting there going like, you know, uh, it, some, sometimes it's, it's, it's as, just basic as, is I don't want to face Joe and Patrick, and, you know, I, I, you know, I just, I, that'd be embarrassing. It's just like, I don't get, I don't know. I'm going to be ashamed, but I'm going like, that'd be embarrassing. I, I would, I would rather deal with this now and be able to report, tell the story in a positive way. So, so, so we get, we get that. And then I want to say just the other, the other ones, Ralph, Ralph Waldo Emerson uh, from self-reliance, um, which I love self-reliance. And I just love the damn title of the, of the, of the piece, you know, <laughs> self-reliance. 
Nothing can be, nothing can bring you peace, but yourself, nothing can bring you peace, but the triumph of principles. Once you, once you come to therapy and you put the fires out, you know, it's it, the first part of therapy is people come in with presenting problems and stuff. And you got, you put the fires out and then, and then, it's, and then some people are done with therapy and that's okay. Yeah. That's a use of therapy. But, but then there's a time where you come in and you st you're staring at each other, the therapist and the client, and you don't really have any fires to put out. And, uh, and it's just, you, know, there's, you know, are we done? And, you know, well, we could be, but then the fun happens, you know, that's when, what happens when these two people come into this room and just sit with, with a common intention of, of looking at, at this person's life and at this person's in, in, intrapersonal perspective and all kinds of things start to happen. And, you know, I've, I've told people before when they'll say, you know, they almost feel like they have to have a problem at the, as a ticket at the door, you know, to get into therapy. You know, they say, I don't really have anything today. I don't have any. So that's OK. Let's just just, just sit here and, and, and do so. And of course, those sessions are always amazing. You know, because we, we may just start off and it may just we may just be chatting about something, but something's going to happen. Something's going to spark and we're going to go someplace. And it's it's a little bit like what we were talking about with, with what writing does, which I think writing is such an important part of that is uh, in this conversation. It's a bit like that because it's, it's it has a life of its own. It's you know, there's, there's two people having a conversation and we, neither one of us actually control it. It's going to, well, you know, and it's going to go someplace. Uh, you know, the, I don't know if it's like positive. We're going to go someplace that's going to be useful. It usually does. So mm -hmm. far, so good. I mm -hmm. uh, thought I'd, I'd throw this out there. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, we come in um, to the rooms or we um, yeah. we begin recovery uh, because we're, we don't have a value system or our value system has become very clouded in our um you know, constant, uh, you know, fixation. We're on not, we're not aware of our value system. That's the yes, thing. That's yes. what I find is, is people have a value system and we, you know, we all know stuff like don't kill somebody for no good reason. It's like, but, but, the, but the deeper value system we do, I think we do have one. We just, you know, and a lot of it's just unconscious. Some of it's brought up from our family. So, but it's like, we don't know that nobody's ever taught us that we have, we can go look at it and we can make choices about it. And then we get to decide. Well, right. And then the value system emerges, um, you know, when we do some work and the reason that it must emerge and it's the thing, it's the buoy that's towing us out from the deep is this, you know, mm -hmm. this new set of um, I, I'm getting the sense that rules is maybe the wrong word, but just kind of principles, values. And then the Stru self structure. Yeah, structure. Self structure. Yeah. And then the self-respect is, is then what starts to grow when we develop a practice of um, holding fast to the to that structure, to that emerging value system. The more that we muscle up our values, that then the self-respect grows because, you know, over time, um, we, you know, we're, we're being true to something that's not mm -hmm. just our kind of, yeah, immediate impulses, which is how we were living for a long time before. What you're saying brings us to a place where, how does that happen though? You, you say it begins to grow. Well, you know, as, as Roger, Roger uh, Andes would tell us, it's, uh, you know, awareness is the, the first step of all change. And, uh, you know, and so what happens, whether it be in therapy or, or in the, in the, the rooms, it's like uh, nobody rescues you when you recognize what your value system is, no matter how unconscious it is, it's, it's like, you know, because we're, we're going, you know, I think the three of us, you know, maybe somebody has a different story, but we're, we're actually going to be quite disappointed when we look at what we, the value system we've been living from, you know, and it's like in, in, in disappointed is probably a lightweight word for that. But it's like the idea is so often what people mistake that people make in being in trying to help is trying to rescue people from that pain, that discomfort that, you know, oh, no, no, it's OK. You know, people people in the program don't do that. They don't they don't rescue. us. You know, they don't rescue. And, and therapists, good therapists don't rescue. We go there. We, we sit there with them. We don't judge it, you know, you know, or or sometimes we keep our judgment to ourselves, whatever that is. It's like. It's like we, you know, we normalize it. We go, you know, because what, well, for us, it's like, because fuck, we've been there, you know, and it's like, because that, because the, the, the growing, the, to, to looking at your, your value system and changing it comes from the place of realizing, you know, that I always say that there's a, I have a five point, uh, 
uh, uh, an ingredient of ingredients of uh, uh, motivation. And the first ingredient is just dissatisfaction. If you're not dissatisfied with something, <laughs> you're not going to do anything, you know, before you even get to the desire to change, you know? And so we, you know, we know that when we have begun our process and, and then multiple times inside it, I would say for me, because, you know, you know, this, I also could hit one of these places tomorrow where I'm going to hit a place where I realize, you know, I'm not satisfied. I'm dissatisfied with something about myself. I, I, I want to do something about it, but then that's that's what that's what sparks the flame well, you're talking about patrick in my opinion that gets people actually ready to to work on it but you have to realize it, it kind of sucks i like what you read about uh it about self-reliance yes and mm -hmm. you know in the case of recovery it's the combination of self-reliance and uh community right you know mm -hmm. so they're mm -hmm. you know but but we have to it's up to us to ask for help, right? Like yes. we're not going to be rescued, right? We need to, right. and and that's kind of a self-respecting thing to say, you know, I need help with this group. Can we talk about mm -hmm. this topic? Or, you know, calling one of our accountability uh, partners. Mm -hmm. But the other component was about it being based on principles, not performance. Mm -hmm. So my self-respect isn't based on never disrespecting myself, perfectly self-respecting myself. It's based on the principle of self-respect and respect for others and respect for the environment. Uh, being a member of my community is not mm -hmm. just these ingrown eyeballs, uh, you know, right. navel gazing at my own problems, right? So uh, all of that comes from uh, when it when it comes from principles, for me, it it eliminates that self defeating. Oh, I you know that you can't talk about yourself that way, Joe. You're starting all over again. You disrespected mm -hmm. yourself. I'm, oh yeah, you know. I've got a I've got another one. I've got another. Yeah. One. It's, it's our relationship with failure, and for me, I mean, I yeah. think that's but that's been key because I'm just thinking as we all talk about this, a component of an an un, an uh, um, an un we can't, uh, we can't put aside that like failure is a big part of coming through this and falling down and maybe we don't yeah. relapse, but like, you know, we fuck up and this really challenges our conception of how well our recovery is going. And, um, and then how, at, at that point, and maybe we have disrespected ourselves, you know, in some way, and then how do we keep going? And I, I suppose like for me, and this is, I'm er it's early days, but like, just the kind of acceptance that this is going to happen and this is going to be a part of the fabric. Um, yeah. and that, that needn't dissuade me from the pursuit of, um, of, of trying to hold, keep that congruence with my emerging value system. I think that is like, you know, it, it just kind of goes off of what Joe was saying about, um, yeah, the principle of self-respect. Well, and, and, and when you say the principle, it's like, I'm, I'm looking back at this Emerson quote, uh, uh, what he would, he, he uses the term triumph of principles, which, which is to me where the, where the behavior, where, you know, where, 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 we're, we're doing what we're, we're doing our part, you know, just mm -hmm. having principles, you know, that's like, that's like, you know, when I'm, when I'm working with, if I'm working with a couple and somebody, somebody says, so she says, she says, he doesn't love me. And he goes, I do love you. You know, I can't believe you don't know, know how much I love you. And I, you know, I had a guy do that one time. And, and I, and I said, uh, are you, are you telling your wife that you love her? And, and he turned to me and said, hell yeah, I'm telling her I love her. <laughs> you know, I think we got to, got, you know, it's like, it's just about how, how do you meet that, that principle? And when you're not congruent, if you're not demonstrating love, you're not, you know, I would say you're not loving and, and, uh, and, but, but that's it. It's, it's, and the other thing both of you are describing is this place that, that we're consistently, we're being reminded ourselves, but also in the teaching we do is is bringing this to us this this is i mean it, and as corny as it is this is the it's the journey not a destination thing it's like we're not trying to get someplace you know we're, you know it's like 
you know, the, the, the day of the, the day of perfect self-respect all day long, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I mean, that's where I always say anybody can have a good day on a good day. I mean, that's, that's not hard <laughs> to do, man. It's like, it's like, and, and God, let's have as many of those as we can, but usually the places where we grow the most are where we get bumped around, knocked down, you know, get back up, brush ourselves off. And, you know, and at the end of the day, a lot of my self-respect is based on maybe the fact that I fucked you know, s- several things up and was able, to, we've been talking about step 10 and, and I started talking about step 10 on the Thursday group, you know, that I'm able to, I'm able to get up, brush myself off, make amends and keep moving. Well, you, you know, know that's, thing- that's self-respect. Cause I've got, cause that means in my imperfection, I was able to, I was able to respond to my imperfection in a way that, that I can feel solid about. Off that One thing that's changed for me recently is, and I didn't get a chance to share about it uh, when I took my cake, but I used to be really, uh, I used to hate how long it took for me to get the amount of sobriety that I did. I used to like, Mm -hmm. you know, really resent the extra time that I lost and, you know, like, why wasn't I better? Mm -hmm. Why wasn't I uh, able to get this uh, without having to lose X, Y, and Z? But I Mm -hmm. like, now I'm starting to kind of understand more about you guys. And then when you would talk about this and you developed a kind of a piece with it, with the, the, the um, pace at which things unfolded. And I think now I'm realizing that like, look, you know, and I think it comes too from um, the snowball effect of kind of like a- accumulating a life that there's just no way that I would have been able to have in that former mindset and realizing, you know, the kind of like, it's a very meticulous process of, and it's not always a straight line to get to some some period of wellness. And I so I kind of look back now and, you know, I, I just don't have I'm noticing that the bitterness is kind of leaching out of, a lot, leaching mm-hmm. out of me about like, you know, how uh, I was uh, t- kicking and screaming on my way to sobriety. <laughs> and then, you know, I got and then got there fitfully and, uh, you know, uh, caused quite a bit of wreckage uh, at the time. But now I'm just. Thank, grateful for it in a way because um, I wouldn't be here uh, without it. You know, I I think uh, one of the things that emotional sobriety is is maturity, and yes. with maturity comes context. And and you you talked about like fucking up. Well, that is our greatest currency in recovery. Mm-hmm. Post traumatic gains. Uh, we lead with our imperfection. We lead with our weakness and, uh, it's the new macho, you know? Yeah. (laughs) And, uh, Oh yeah. yeah, It's well, Joe, that's, I was talking to somebody about that the other day, that the idea, the the idea that, that if we could use our little time travel test and, and if we, if we travel, if I traveled back and, 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 you know, let my earlier self know, you know, what I am, what I am, what I respect myself for, what I, you know, what I, you know, and when I was using vulnerability as an example is like, the idea is vulnerability. I grew up in, you know, like most of us in our culture and and maybe, I don't know if it's especially men, but I, I know it from the point of view of men is that vulnerability is bad. You, you know, vulnerability is, is, you know, it's like, it's the exact opposite here mm-hmm. it's like it's like we know the value of vulnerability it's mm-hmm. like if, we, if we're here to learn being vulnerable is 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 one of the most important aspects of our of our being that we need to get to the to the material right someone says joe you're despicable i can fight him on it or i can say yeah. so what <laughs> or, or you can say, tell me, tell me more, tell me more. I, in what ways am I despicable? Because that's a generalization. It's like, you're yeah. probably not entirely despicable. You know, I'm just, I'm just guessing. Man, you know, that would suck to not be entirely despicable, only partially, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, we all, yeah. Uh, what do you well, mean well, suck? Well, we go. are all pa- partially despicable. <laughs> 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 or have been. Uh, I just don't I like have. that glass half empty mentality. Now go it's, all the way. Yeah. 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 No, I think, but I do think that's an important, that comes up in, in therapy a lot, which, which is the idea that these, these, uh, we, we, we do such a number on ourselves and, and in our, both our intrapersonal world and the interpersonal world with, with, with generalizations. It's like, 
you know, identification, you know, it's, it's like, it's the place where we say, you know, uh, even just with the language, you know, uh, I am, dep- I, you know, I am depressed versus I am experiencing depression. It's like, uh, you know, I am an alcoholic. I'm perfectly set, set. I say that all the time because that's part of what, how I grew up in this, in this program. So, mm-hmm. but, but the truth is, if I'm really, if I'm going to say that more thoughtfully, I say, I, you know, you want to drink. I don't have, you know, I, I don't say I can't drink because, because that, because I think that's a mistake. We say, I, I, I'm an alcoholic, so I can't drink. And I always say, I'm an alcoholic and I can drink. And boy, can I drink? And, can and, I it's, drink? and, and it's like, it's like, it's like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, I still have my alcoholic ego about how good yeah. I am. You know, it's like it's still there. It's it's like, but I, but the, but I tell but I tell people all the time with this stuff and others, it's like, this is where you make the the transition from from can't to won't because it's it's empowering. Yeah. It's about so it's like I I I'm an alcoholic, so I won't drink. You know, in other words, I'm really saying I refuse to drink because of this situation. It's like, you know, and, and I ask people in our workshops sometimes j- without context. Interesting. I, I say, just stand up. Everybody stand up, you know, stretch out and just and I want you just to say the word a few times. Just say the word can't out loud. Just everybody say it. Okay, do it. And then, now I said, OK, now all I want you to do is do the same thing, only with the word won't. And, and, I, and after they do it for a few while, I go, like, which one of those is more powerful? And it's 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 obvious. It feels different in your body. I don't know why exactly that is. I think it has to do with what vowel it is. I think the O vowel is more powerful than the A vowel. But it's it's uh, uh but it's a, but it's about personal choice. You're owning it. You know, I don't, you know, I, you know, I I don't say certain things to my wife because I can't say them, but no, I don't do that because I know my history of being a control freak. You know, and and even little little piece p- picky little things I could say that maybe somebody else could get away with, just like somebody else could have a drink and not have a problem. Yeah, I don't say them because because they're they're likely to take us back into a, a place where we are in in where we were in trouble. Initially, the idea for this episode came from the uh, our Facebook group. The uh, where we're trying to build it up. Um, it's been yeah. a little bit of disarray, but. Um, I, you know, I would like for it to be, and I, you know, at times it can be like kind of emotional sobriety group hive mind. And they asked about self-compassion or this, this right. individual asked about self-compassion. Yeah. We just, we went with self-respect, but I thought yeah. I should touch on, and, 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 and Tom in particular, you know, you talk a lot about self-condemnation, self-hatred as being these mm-hmm. like cinder blocks tied to us that we, you know, need to mm-hmm. overcome the concept of like, I'm going to just beat on myself and put myself down, put the side of myself down. It's not working for me in the hopes that, um, that's that part of me will go away. <laughs> and then, you know, productive me will roll out and, uh, I'll be able to all of a sudden, you know, uh, get a 10 out of 10 at, you know, yeah. X, X, Y, or Z. And, and, you know, I literally, it's the, uh, the insanity is doing the same thing over and over inspecting different result. I was in, in that form of insanity for a while. And, um, and it's, it started to alleviate, you know, with obviously with, you know, all the things I've talked about and then uh, honestly just talking with guys like you and kind of hearing about your experiences with it. But I think like when I hear talk about self-compassion, find a way to not beat on yourself. And then perhaps there's in, within that, within, within, within a, a contrary form of behavior, you can like really let the best parts of yourself out into the light. Right. Well, self. This is part of the reason I wrote the the self respect book after self forgiveness, is self respect is very much a part of self compassion. See, they're, they're too often we we are, uh, we we have histories like what you described, Patrick, in which in which you know we we're, we're we're tough on ourselves, but not in a way that feels like a, a like a positive parent. It doesn't feel like somebody's being tough on me because they love me. It doesn't feel like I'm being tough on myself because I care. It's I'm, I'm just because that part's always just going to say, just going to show it doesn't matter what I do. I often ask people if they get in touch with their 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 should message should, uh, should messages or their their inner should monster. You know, uh, can you imagine your should monster saying to you one day, you know, I know, I know I'm really hard on you, but, but uh, I got to tell you today, I'm really proud. And it, it, whatever people will do every time is they start laughing. And I go, the reason you laugh is because what I just said is totally ridiculous because it would not happen with that voice, you know, but what I say about self, about self-love is, is that the, at least in my day-to-day life, 
the the greater part of self love for me is is is, is more, uh, akin to parental uh, tough love. You know, it's the the self love is not like no, it's because because I I know how to let myself off every fucking hook. I did that in my addiction. I did you know I can do that with with or without alcohol. It's like no, it's the the self love so me for me so much is about self respect. It is it is Tom get up. You got to get, got to get moving. We got, you know, it, hell, even my, my tough loving parent inside cusses as much as the rest of me, but, it, but, but the difference is the feel it's not, on, it's he's on, that's on my side. You know, it's, it's get up because you're, th this is important. Why is it important? Cause you're important. Now get up and get this thing done. We're not going to just lay there. You know, you know, I understand there's a cat laying on top of you and you think you can't disturb the cat, but you have to still get up. You understand that Patrick, right? Yes. <laughs> it's like the cat uh, law i i've get, this word won't i think is very empowering let's say like uh, i got asked hey can you make it to the podcast and mm -hmm. it the schedule didn't work and i said mm -hmm. i won't be making it to the podcast mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. but i hope you guys have a great time and i hope i can mm -hmm. get there quickly mm -hmm. as opposed to oh i can't like i have no agency yeah. my my world is controlling me Right. You know, yeah. it's it's empowering to use won't. Well, it's interesting. Watching, and watching, I'm watching you and, and how you, you when you hear it, we, I, I never got this part either. But you go can't. It's like in won't. It's like yeah. it's, it, it's it really it, you know, it really is. That's one of the things I love what you said, Joe, because this is one of the things that's been very it may seem like a small thing in a lot of a lot of ways. But it's really important for me is the idea that I, I have always been somebody, if, if I am not able to do something or if I'm not going to do something, I mm -hmm. give way too much information and explanation about what that is. I mean, it's like I do some of my, my you know, in college, I did some of my best fiction writing that way because making up stories uh, to do that. But but it's like I realize that that if, 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 if I'm not going to be able, if I'm not going to make it to something, I can say. You know, I, I can feel myself even now saying one say, I can't do it. It's like if I, you know, because the truth is I do have choices and I probably could do it. It's like for me just to say I'm not going to be there is and, and, and it feels like an incomplete communication. Yeah. Even now, when I as a demonstration, as I say it, it's like I feel like I owe more. But I think about myself on the other side of that. When other people do that, you turn that around. I don't, there's, I mean, maybe, I mean, if, if, if one of you guys said, you, you know, you're, you're not going to be there and I'm, and I'm concerned about you, I might wonder, are you okay? Or something like that. But, uh, but generally speaking, I'm not that involved with, with other people that I may be meeting with along the way that, that, that I give a shit, you know, if I, if, if, uh, if you know, if I'm their therapist and I say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make that session today. It's like, I don't, you know, it's my business. Why I'm not going to make the session. That's right. really important. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. I think I've done that too. The uh, endless exculpatory paragraph about, uh, you know, I just can't. Let me, let me tell you, let me side note here, but uh, my friend D O'Neill in, in Austin college, Sherman, Texas, back in the circa 1975 or something. It's like, um, I, I gave all these explanations, all this stuff all the time. So one of the times I was with him, we were getting ready to go, go drinking, I'm sure. And he, he, went, he goes, comes to our, he goes by a professor, um, P professor Gorski, uh, who's our psychologist, psychology to prison. And he walks in, he says, I just gotta, I gotta get a, get an extension on my, on my paper. And he walks in and he says, uh, he says, Dr. Gorski, he said, I'm not going to be able to get my paper in on time because mm -hmm. uh, I've had, I have personal problems. And, and, and Gorski goes, okay. And it's like, and he leaves. And I went, what the fuck? How did you, what'd you do? And he said, he said, if you say you have personal problems, there's not anybody in the, on this campus who wants to know. They're not going to ask you the question, <laughs> your personal problems. Wow. And so I thought, wow, that's that he's my role model for how to, how to get out of shit. Hmm. <laughs> Well, before we um, wrap up today, I really wanted to check in with Joe and see what he's up to out there in Minnesota and see if there's any uh, nuggets of wisdom he can uh, throw our way. Uh, yes, uh, it's been uh, rich. It's it's called uh, rewriting uh, your recovery, right? Because, uh, you know, sometimes we have a, a story and we, we say it out of habit, but is it true? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, like, was it true then? Is it true now? Right. And sometimes the labels we use, we need new labels. And sometimes the villains 
uh, we perceive in our lives, we've got to find a new way to look at them. Uh, you know, and uh, see, you know, well, what's their damage? You know, what, what's what's going on there, right? You know, maybe they're just acting in accordance with their programming and conditioning. And I got offended because they acted naturally, right? So again, mm. that gives yes. me more agency, right? And it's, and, and recovery is storytelling, right? You know, mm-hmm. we tell our story and and it, sure we listen and we hear things and we gain nuggets of course but it's by saying it owning it and you know that helps us become it right like like mm-hmm. none of this if if you've had a, a, a drink today uh, you can listen but we don't want to hear from you how are they going to get sober without hearing themselves talk (laughs) Mm -hmm. and uh and when we're stuck in our recovery when you know the old narratives aren't working for us or we feel in a rut um you know let's you know that's a great opportunity to put pen to paper in the same way we do inventory and you know write our way out of it if we're inclined that way right you know like it is a construct it is a story we did make it up Right. It's based on, you know, uh, archetypes of characters. They're all two dimensional. I'm so complicated. But but because I tend to do that doesn't mean I have to be stuck in that. I can go back and and see the world in a a, from a broader lens. It's sort of third person in my own life. That's what we're learning here. If you don't mind, Joe, could I ask, is there anything about your recovery, a narrative that you've rewritten Yes, um, I um, find new ways to identify in a meeting. Like, I don't particularly find the word alcoholic to be uh, shaming, but I understand mm-hmm. that in this century that we're in now, not the century I got sober in, right? It's a different mm-hmm. world. And uh, so, can I use a new language? My name's mm-hmm. Joe. I'm in recovery. My name's mm-hmm. Joe. I'm a happy customer of uh, like AANA or whatever, mm-hmm. eh, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, or my name's Joe and, you know, someone like me really shouldn't drink. So that's one area I'm re- like the labels I use and, uh, you know, the sort of narratives, like a, a lot of them, I'm, uh, I know I have blind spots. So by the ver- their very nature, I'm unaware of them. So, you know, maybe another way of looking at things can expose me to, you know, uh, a, a blind spot that could cost me sometime in the mm-hmm. future. There's a guy at a meeting that I used to go to who used to identify as a dopeless hope fiend. I was like that. <laughs> that's beautiful. Uh, that's, that's I love wonderful. that. That's wonderful. That's yeah, wonderful. Yeah, it's a great guy. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, it's so much better than Netflix going to a meeting, eh? yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> These days, <That> is- yeah. <laughs> Dope, a dopeless, I gotta remember that. A dopeless, dopeless hope thing. Yeah, shout out to Neil. Yeah, but um, yeah, I'm so glad we uh, got together. You know, uh, yeah. uh, this was a little bit last minute. Um, Alan's, uh, he's got some personal stuff that he's dealing with, but well, we're thinking Alan, of him. We're, you know, we're all in this together, right? And uh, right. you know, yeah, that's right. If it means uh, stepping up and uh, filling the gap, we can do that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Alan, uh, Alan was the seed that this thing grew from and, yep. uh, you know, he'll be returning sooner rather than later. Yep. Yeah. Love you guys. See you right. soon. Peace. Love you too. Peace. Tinge your life. Tinge your myth. Cultivate your narrative with whomever you're with. Then with glass in hand and children on one knee. Bring some stories. Bring your stories back to me It ain't a crime to be a human Never be ashamed to be yourself Rest assured that whatever you're doing will entertain me like nobody else So here's to us my old friends Until it's time to drink the wine and break the bread again Glass in hand and children on me. Bring some stories, bring your stories back to me.